Welcome to CarDesign.Academy and our Gravity Sketch course. Uh, we've started with some quick exercises on uh, shapes and forms and generating them through a simple sketch process using the ink brush. Uh, this is the most familiar way that people use to, to sketch in Gravity Sketch, and it's really the, the foundation of the program. And it, it enables you to very quickly ex explore uh, forms and volumes in human scale. Um, and in here, in here I've, I've uh, done a quick demo of a manned aerial quadcopter, uh, something like a sports car for the sky. Uh, what I wanted to show you today is uh, the next step, which is uh, what I call sub-D form studies. Uh, so this is this is a quick line sketch just to establish a general shape and proportion and volume and to understand how it, it fits with the occupant. But the next step is is to, to really start to explore form. And so um, what I'm going to do first is go into my layers and you can see I've I've got a layer for my my mannequin. I've got my layer for my uh, under sketch here, the, the original sort of quick line sketch. And then I've got another layer for the cleanup sketch that I did. So the next one I'm going to do is the, the form layer. So, so I'm going to do is take my sketch layers and just turn them way down. Just so they're there as a reference. I'm going to turn on my mirror plane. And I'm going to go straight into sub D. Now the quickest way to get into sub D is to use a primitive. So I'm going to start with a cube. And I'm, I'm going to actually go to subdivisional object. I'm going to turn on cube. And uh, I'm going to select kind of a silvery color, reflective material. And I'm just going to draw a quick cube here. Now I want to join this at center line. So, um, so I'm going to turn on my uh, control, control vectors, go into edit mode. I'm going to select the face, the inside face of this cube and delete it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to position this cube really close to the mirror plane. Go back into edit mode, and I'm going to um, also go to auto select loop. So I'm going to grab this whole in inward edge here, and I'm going to join it at the mirror plane. And then I'm also going to just take the outside face, bring it into something something a little bit more like the general width of the vehicle and the length. And so now I've just got a basic volume to start with. Now. Uh, I've got it in, in full poly mode right now, so uh, if I turn on subdivision, it's, it looks a lot more like this egg shape that I want in the aerial vehicle. So from there, um, I'm going to just start to, to add uh, control points here and there to, to, to start to bring about a, a more interesting shape. So you know, when, you, when you're working in editing in sub-D, um, you can add... You can add uh, loops. These they're called edge loops, right? So you're adding additional uh, polygons. You just simply tap on one of the one of the uh, edges going this way. So now I have a new row of edges going all the way around here. And now I can edit. Uh, I can edit this object uh, a lot differently. So so I'm going to do that as well down here. Just bring, you know, just start to bring uh, a bit of shape and form into the object. Can also give it more taper at the ends. So now if I turn it on, uh, subdivision. It, it start. If I turn subdivision level on, it's starting to take on more of the character of 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 the original sketch. And the more edit points I keep adding, the the more defined it gets. I can add edges going this way as well. So now, if I want to give it give it a bit more of a of a uh, hard edge running through the uh, center line, just like I have in the original sketch, I can do that. So, so you can see now if I turn on, uh, if I turn subdivision off, you can see what I have in terms of polygons. What what ends up happening is if you have uh, the closer together your your points are, the tighter the bend is. 
Um, if the further away your, your points are, the, the bigger the bend is. So, so it's just about managing the, the number of edge loops and points, how close or how far apart they are. Think, think of it as control vectors in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop when you're, when you're doing paths and vectors. Um, it's, it's really the same thing. So I've got this shape that's generally matching the, the, uh, the design intent of the original uh, line sketch. Now I want to give it this sort of cut off look at the ends. So I just added a, a, a row of edges around here to tighten up those, those ends. But here I want to have this more this sort of shark nose um, front end. So that so that's how you get um that's how you get an overall shape in sub D. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tune this line a bit. Just just keep getting it closer to the original original sketch. Now, um being that this is an aerial quadcopter, uh I'm gonna add uh just a, just some propeller rings. Um so I'm gonna go into my primitive shapes. And I'm going to use the torus. And that'll just give me uh, a quick round, a quick round shape. This is also a subdivisional object. So, um, so if I turn on the control points, it, it it's it's on. And I can even add some some tension, some some uh, uh, some more of an airfoil section to this thing. So I can I can take using auto select loops, I can take uh, these points up and down and give it more of that uh, sort of airfoil section that a quadcopter has. And so th these are way bigger than they need to be. So I'm just gonna shrink these down. And I can duplicate these and move them back. Now these are these are infinitely movable objects because they're designed to direct airflow in, in whatever direction is needed to to steer the craft. So I'm going to give it a little bit of gesture to it as well. So so now I have a really really cool sub D form study to work from. Now, um, what I like to do is I like to do a lot of variations. So I'm going to grab this entire uh, model. I'm going to group it and I'm going to make some duplicates. And then I can start to do variations. So turning on my, my uh, control vectors, now I can start to push and pull points. To get to give it more visual interest. You can see I'm getting some very interesting forms.
So I'll try something different on this one. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Maybe this thing has a little bit of a, a, a canopy where, where the driver sits, the pilot. Let's try doing something a little bit more angular on this one. How, how much more angular can we get? You see, the more the more points I add, the more the more angular it gets. You see how very quickly you can you can end up with three very 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 different designs. So this is what I call the sub D form study, and I see a lot of uh, students do some very very successful um, concepts that way. So that is how you do sub D form studies and. I encourage you to try this exercise uh, in order to sort of break away from familiar uh, shapes that you're that you're used to, especially when it comes to cars. Um, you know, try try some aerial vehicles, try some marine vehicles, or just try some really cool, just abstract form studies. Um, so, thanks for watching, and um, I look forward to uh, showing you uh, some tips and tricks on how to turn these early form studies into a real serious design proposal. So thanks for watching.